Hour. Right now, we're going to take a look at General Electric. For GE, green tech is where the green is. Is planning to ramp up production of solar panels early next year in hopes of turning its renewable energy arm into a multi billion dollar business. Joining us now from the Council on Competitiveness National Energy Summit that's happening in Washington is GE Energy Infrastructure CEO John Krenicki. His unit, notably here, the only GE business that showed an increase in revenue in the first half of the year. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, you've been credited with that title. Can you explain why? this division was as successful as it was in the first half of the year. You know, we run the business for the long term. Uh, we've got great technology. We've got great teams uh, deployed around the globe. Seventy percent of our business is outside the United States. We're very diversified in the types of products uh, we offered. I heard you mention renewables. You know, we've only been in the renewables business for about seven years. We bought Enron's wind business. Today, we're the number one player in renewables in the United States. One out of every two wind turbines that ships in the U.S. is a GE machine. Mm -hmm. So we're capable of scaling these new businesses. We're going to do the same thing in the smart grid area. And uh, our capability to evolve and change and, and diversify is what propels this, this franchise forward. Uh, you mentioned that, that acquisition of the wind business from Enron. Morgan Stanley this week calling that the best acquisition in GE history since you only paid $300 million for it, and now the business is pulling in $6.5 billion in revenue. It's fairly high-margin business. Um, but it speaks to sort of a broader conversation that's happening about General Electric right now. GE was seen as an industrial during the crisis. People started to think of it as a financial. Are you seeing now, sir, that people are once again interested in the infrastructure, in the industrial portion of General Electric's business? I would tell you we're totally focused on our customers and, and uh, governments around the world. You know, many of our customers are government entities. For instance, we're doubling the electricity in Iraq. We just announced last week the largest order in the history of Kuwait. Mm -hmm. So there's high interest. Uh, we enable uh, higher standings, uh, standard of living for people around the world. Uh, there's a lot of money in the energy sector. So our, we're not distracted at all. It's full speed ahead. We've been playing offense in this space for a long period of time. And if anything, we're just going to double down going forward uh, as, as the strength and diversity of our franchise uh, delivers. You highlighted the Middle East there. Is that the largest area that you see in, in terms of uh, potential growth? Or is it, as most people uh, seem to be gesturing towards China, that's going to be the next story? You know, we're active in all sectors. Uh, you know, in the Middle East, al almost 60 percent of electric power in the Middle East is generated on G equipment. But there we do very well in oil and gas type generating equipment. Um, in China, we're localized in uh, 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 in, in renewables, we have wind production there. As China begins to tap into the global LNG markets, we've competed very well in gas turbines in China. So we see that as a, a great market. And these things tend to move around over time. Mm -hmm. But we plant flags for 50 years. So we're in China, we're in Russia, we're in Latin America, we're in the United States is still very important to us, Western Europe. And uh, that diversity allows us to fund R&D and scale these businesses and be a leader in virtually most of the areas we choose to play. Uh, within China, though, there, there has been some noise in terms of that government having a, pr a preference for locally owned, locally produced products that are manufactured there. Um, as being an icon of American business, how does that hurt conducting business in that you know, country? We, we localize, you know, so uh, we manufacture wind turbines in Pensacola, Florida, Greenville, South Carolina, and also in Shenyang, China. So we've got to have quick response, great service, and uh, where, the, where there are big markets, we will invest and take advantage of those markets, but deliver the highest technology, uh, best performing machines. So we buy a lot in China, we sell a lot in China, but we also buy a lot and sell a lot in the United States. Our purchases of uh, raw materials in the United States is about $8 billion a year. So we do a lot of business with small and medium-sized companies. But as we export these machines to world markets, uh, we pull a lot of people along. So th the export nature of our energy franchise, I think, is good for the United States. All right. Thank you so much. GE Energy Infrastructure CEO John Panicki joining us live from Washington, highlighting wind as uh, the future there of alternative energy.